So in the last lecture, we stopped at a point where we had the entropy as a function of the energy and the volume. And we were pointing that the entropy and the energy V were uh, expressions are state functions and we can move back and forth between them. And we had uh, the U is equal to du by ds v ds plus du dv s dv where du is equal to t ds minus p dv so these variables are equated I'll put the minus in there I forget and we had ds is equal to ds by du v du plus ds by dv u dv and ds is equal to one over t du and that's from uh oops ah that is from uh inverting uh du by ds and uh this is plus p over t dv and this is from uh recognizing we have uh du by dv times ds by du, right? So we can cancel those out and get du by dv. So du by dv is p, and this is 1 over t. OK, so what's happening here, though? And more importantly, what can we do with it? Well, what we have here is two expressions that are equivalent that are, well, we're using, uh, we're able to, to move between the thermodynamic variables, but we can do more than that. And I'm gonna show you how we can express these thermodynamic potentials or thermodynamic uh, state functions. Again, it's still just about being able to move through the different thermodynamic variables. So previously, we had our enthalpy, right? And we introduced it by just defining it. And we defined that h is equal to u plus pv and if you remember this was kind of a means of lumping variables together in an expression but we could have just as well just come out and said well we're going to define h is equal to u plus pv and having this we can say the h is equal to du plus d pv is equal to du plus uh, p dv plus v dp, right? We're going to uh, relax the constraint of, of uh, constant p here. And then substitute in for du. du is equal to t ds minus p dv. So this gives us dH is equal to T dS minus P dV plus P dV plus V dP. So 
There we have cancellation. We get dH is equal to T dS plus V dP is equal to dH by dS dS. This is constant P plus dH by dP, holding S constant, dP. And we can equate these to each other. But ultimately, this means that we've defined this enthalpy, H, as a function of the entropy and the pressure. So this is pretty cool. I mean, it means that we have a means of cycling between thermo thermodynamic variables. And the technique that we're using is called a Legendre transform. And we can do this you know, continuously, we can just keep changing as long as we have more therm thermodynamic variables. So for example, let's uh, define A is equal to U minus TS. Okay, DA is equal to DU minus T DS minus S DT, putting in U, is equal to T dS minus P dV. Well, that plus T dS and the minus T dS are going to cancel. And we substitute this in, so that's gone, which means we're left with dA is equal to minus S dT minus P dV is equal to the derivative of A with respect to temperature, constant volume, dT plus the derivative of A with respect to volume, constant temperature, dV. So these are related, minus S and dA by dT and minus P and dA by dV. And it means that we have a function now of temperature and volume. And this is called the Helmholtz free energy. And this is you know, becoming a little bit more useful, right? Up here, we've got uh, you know, S is a function of U and V. And here we got S as a, as a variable. Here, uh, S is a variable. Uh, there's no knob on the equipment that has an S, right? But we do have the ability to control temperature and to a lesser extent to control volume, uh, which brings us to the, the last variable or last uh, uh, function here. And that is going to be G is equal to U minus T S plus P V. So DG is equal to DU, which is T DS minus P DV. DU, uh, right, minus T DS minus S. D T plus P D V plus V D P. So that cancels. That cancels and uh, P D V cancels. T D S cancels. T D S cancels. And we're left with D G is equal to minus S D T plus V D P is equal to 
dg by dt p dt plus dg by dp t dp now means we've got some function g a function of t and p temperature and pressure those are things that we can easily control and this is called the gibbs free energy Now, it's worth pointing out that this Gibbs free energy as expressed here here is useful, but what we're going to find more useful in the near future is to recognize G is equal to U minus T S plus P V, our definition, of course, and uh, this is equal to H minus TS because H is equal to U plus PV, right? So there and there. And what makes this particularly useful is because it lets us talk about the enthalpy, uh, which we know is the, uh, the heat, uh, the change in the heat uh, at constant pressure and the entropy and what's also nice is that uh, at T going to zero, G goes to H. So we have the convergence of, of the uh, free energy and the enthalpy as we get to zero Kelvin. Okay. What else is there to talk about with this? Well, it's worth pointing out that all of these, because we have these come on, relations, we can have a, a, a transformation between them. And if you look at the Gaskell textbook, chapter five is basically an entire chapter on applying these you know, Maxwell relations, right? So we have uh, dH by dS P is equal to T is equal to du by ds v minus da by dv t is equal to p is equal to minus du by dv s minus dg by dt p is equal to s is equal to minus da by dt v uh, dg by dp t is equal to v is equal to dh by dp s right and then these give us you know i guess a set of uh, gymnastics to be able to move back and forth between these potentials um, And we also had the, uh, again, referring back to uh, chapter five, there's uh, also a brief presentation on uh, you know, the Maxwell's functions that we discussed before. Uh, and I wanna remind you of this just because they are very useful. Uh, if you have some DZ, where z is a function of x and y, and you have a dz, the total differential, y dx, y dx plus dz by dy x dy. 
and this is some say function L of X and Y and that is some function M of X and Y then uh, D M by D X is equal to D by D X D by D Y of Z is equal to D by D Y of D by D X of Z is D by D Y of I'm calling L here, right? And the fact that this order is independent, right? We know that our thermodynamic functions are, are state functions and they allow for that. The, the, uh, the transformation is always path independent. And that means that then we can have things like our uh, du is equal to t ds minus p dv. And using this relation, we can have a uh, dt by dv at constant s is equal to minus dp by ds constant v. And all of these, you know, math tricks are applicable to our various free energies, enthalpies, entropies, and other expressions. So let's talk a little bit more about work. And, and the reason I, I bring this up is, is because we see here that uh, during our Legendre transform, we have our uh, du is equal to, uh, well, this, right? And in this particular system, we just picked pressure volume work. And it doesn't have to be that, right? What we have is du is del Q minus del W, well, that del Q is entirely managed by T ds, which means that this is everything else. Right? So in the case of uh, you know, pressure volume, uh, the the pressure you can think of the pressure as as a, as a essentially a, a force and the volume as a distance right any time that you have work the the picture to imagine is the uh, you know block on a plane this is your you know whatever first semester of physics you got some force and it travels some delta x. So that's force times delta x. And that's, you know, of course, a uh, Newton meter, which is our joule, which is our, our work. Uh, and the same is true for all other, I guess, forms of work. We have some type of uh, pair of variables pressure volume, uh, you know, electric field and uh, dielectric displacement, uh, or in the case of, of what we're going to find important, uh, mu dn. This is the chemical potential. And that is the number of atoms or moles 
right? So this is the uh, energy to uh, add or subtract a certain number of atoms. And these are the number of atoms that are added or subtract, subtracted from the system. And this is our chemical work. And it's a form of work because, well, everything that's not heat is work and putting atoms into a system, that's, that's uh, not heat. So let's then uh, write out our Gibbs free energy uh, in terms of some generic set of variables. So dG is equal to dG by d temperature at constant pressure and whatever other set of variables here dt plus dg by dp holding temperature constant and everything else constant plus the sum j equals one to n d g by d x j d x j holding pressure temperature and x call this q Q is not equal to J, right? So holding all the variables constant except for the Jth, which is being varied. Oops. And let's uh, take an example. Let's say we've got a system with uh, xenon and helium gas gas, well, then dg is equal to minus s dt plus v dp plus mu plus z on dn xe plus mu he dn he. And this also means now that our entropy negative S is equal to dG dT holding P uh, holding P the number of Xeon and the number of helium constant. Okay, what can what else can we say about this? Well, we can say that the first derivatives are our uh, thermodynamic variables. Right, you take the first derivative of the Gibbs potential with respect to temperature and you return another thermodynamic variable. Right, you can think of this as kind of uh, moving around in our uh, design space. Uh, well, the second derivative is, oh, geez, Louise. These are uh, 
properties or you want know, to think of them as physical observables, right? In the case of Gibbs energy, the first derivatives, dg dt p is equal to minus s and dg d p t is equal to v and you know that already if we take d squared g d t squared that is uh negative d by dt s right because our first derivative of gibbs with respect to temperature is negative entropy holding holding a pressure constant Okay, and this is minus the H by the, oh. By the T, one over T, one over T is equal to minus CP over T. Uh, so where does this come from? Well, DS by DT, and if we multiply that by DH by DS, DS by DH, you know, that's equal to one. That will let us have dH by dt, dS by dH. And that we know is heat capacity. That's you know, the definition of constant pressure heat capacity. And here we have dH is equal to T dS plus V dP, which means that dH by dS is equal to T, which makes dS by dH one over T. Okay, so We've got the second derivative of Gibbs, or let's just say taking the derivative of Gibbs twice with respect to temperature returns the heat capacity. Um, and similarly, although in a less, uh, a little, more, little more direct fashion, uh, the uh, isothermal compressibility kt is equal to minus 1 over v dv by dp T, so the Gibbs free energy, dG squared by dP squared is equal to dV by dP at constant temperature is equal to V kT. And uh, 
alpha is equal to one over V dV by dT P. That is the coefficient of thermal expansion. All right, so if we take d squared g dp by dt, which is also equal to, uh, no, also equal to d squared, oh yeah, d squared g, no, new batteries in the pen didn't seem to help, I guess, dp, we have ds by dp at constant t is equal to dv by dt at constant pressure. And this is the alpha. So, and I, I, I think I mentioned this earlier, this is the name of the game. Make a bunch of measurements. Measure you know, physical properties. And determine this by integrating those curves determine the free energies and those free energies once you have the shape of those curves you can do all sorts of things right the state function gives you all the information you can possibly have about the state so you know, a couple handfuls of uh, data is going to be enough to give you a reasonable fit. Well, hopefully, let's put it this way. It'll give you a reasonable fit within a range of allowed parameters. So you may not have the temperature from zero Kelvin to you know, vaporization, but you'll have it over a, a working range. 